That was a good pop. I tried. I'm doing pop. my best. I'm drinking water. I'm drinking water because I'm all messed up right now. I'm on vacation. No, you're not. <laughs> hey, I'm have off. I mean, no, you are actually. Uh, yeah, I took off on Monday. I put my out of office. So it's almost done. your birthday. We're done. It's almost his birthday. It is. On Monday. I, I was going to almost put you on the spot and force you to open your birthday gift on Save there. It. I'm, I'm, I'm sure saving we'll... it. I got you a real, I'm like real proud of what I got you. I think you're really going to like this stuff. I have no idea what it can be. Yeah. No, you, you like, you really don't. Legitimately, I have no idea. So in case any, any gibberish is spoken tonight, you, right. you've been working up until the second you left. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and then I got, I got stuck in traffic for 90 minutes. So that was fun. I am back from Thailand. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> like I, got, I, I got back like 24 hours ago and like my, my brain is scrambled from the time travel. I, I, number one, I am impressed that we are doing this. Number two, yeah. I am impressed that not only are we going to do a thing after this, but you were willing to do a thing after that too. So like, like it I'm, I'm, I like, I'm afraid you're going to die tomorrow. <laughs> like literally like, tomorrow. Don't say gonna... that. I have so much <laughs> yeah, shit to do tomorrow. I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I feel like it doesn't matter what I do and when I get weird. I've been getting weirdly timed pockets of like sleepiness and awakeness. It's just like, yeah. Like yeah. in the middle of the day, I get super sleepy. And then in the middle of the night, I get super awake. Like I woke up at like 2 AM last night and I was ready. I was ready to like get up and get moving. But it was it not was, uppy time yet. It was 10 a.m. your time, 8 p.m. my time when we were talking. Like that one yeah. time we were trying to figure something out. Yeah. And it the, was just like that. Like, yeah, like your body is not in a right space. I was a little quicker to change it to New York time because it was like 11 hours. So for oh, some reason, fair. the math made more sense. And now I'm having a hard time doing that here. So right now it is a little after 530 in L.A. It's a little after 730 a.m. in Bangkok. So scrambled brain, scrambled brain. You would have been so proud of what I ate there. I tell me. I I ate so many things. I only ate the same thing twice though, just because it. I love I, I love pad thai in yeah. general, and I really wanted Thailand. You're pad in, thai. I was gonna say you're in Thailand. Like one time I had it, um, when we were so the the one sightseeing day i had mm -hmm. it was a, the most incredible thing the hotel was lovely and they set us up with a personal tour guide and they nice. like they came up and just like picked me and one other person from my group up in a mm -hmm. private car and we had one driver and one private tour guide like assigned to us nice. and she she was a wonderful tour guide filled with so much information but also so much energy and she took us on their canal tour where we got in the oh, boat cool. and went yeah. down a canal and what it was was every so often we would stop to visit like you know canal side stores yes. and restaurants mm -hmm. so one of my pad ties came from one of oh, those restaurants. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, like yes. <laughs> it was so it was that I think that was my favorite pad thai. The second time I had it we actually went to a mall. And ate at a restaurant in the mall. I mean, that's watching every Bourdain show, watching every one of those shows. Like, I would it's rather good. have a guide who is taking me to the places that are not like so the main nice. restaurants and stuff like that. Like, yeah, take me to the stall, take me to the market. That's where I want to be. We there. we did a lot of uh, food stall uh, yeah, exactly. visits because we we went. They have like tons of night markets. You I, you would love the food there. So and we went up and I down would. the night markets. I posted a picture of, of scorpions saw, yeah, that they were. I, saw, yeah, I did yeah. not eat the scorpions, but I ate almost everything else, which, as many of you well know, is very unusual for me. So I will eat most things and I would not touch the scorpion. I am like, don't worry on that. Like, I'm still not to my level of eating bugs and yeah. like, the crickets and the, tr the fried tarantula, stuff like that. Like, no, I was lucky. No one no. jumped in my like social media comment oh, section God, and yeah, said, yeah. "I dare you," because no. I definitely would have went back and and ate. No. This is going to sound really lame, but one of my absolute favorite things I ate while I was there was, I think I think they were called honey bear pancake. I forget the actual name of it. They were just it was a cup filled with mini pancakes, okay. and they were honey flavored pancakes. And then the yep. dude would like flop a pat of butter on them. Why is that lame? Oh my god! Why? Like yes, because it's I would... just like it's not, yeah. you know. I would snack I on that in a, in oh. 
less than a heartbeat. I was lucky I got a small cup and we had walked away from the stall because I could have eaten hundreds of those. They were so good. I would have the honey pancakes too. They like that good. is, yeah, yeah. No, it's so, so good. That's why I just rewatch again, like Bourdain shows are my favorite. No, like no reservations, especially. Uh, and then I like, I love somebody feed Phil. I love that aspect of like, cause that, that would be me. I don't know enough about the culture. So yeah. like, you have to tell me, like, I like, I want to go, I want to learn, but I also definitely, like, show me the good things. I definitely needed someone to tell me everything yeah. <laughs> along the way. I'm yeah. not, I'm not good at like planning and organizing a trip like that myself. So I was very happy that we had a tour guide for that particular day. Um, now that we've blabbed about Thailand, a little housekeeping for today, because we are going live, obviously, right now. It is not going to be a merry hour, though. It will likely be a merry 40 minutes because we actually have a 7 p.m. screening that we have to race off to. But we wanted to do this episode because, obviously, we missed last week because I was away. Also, because there's a bunch of big titles out now that yeah. need to be discussed and reviewed I feel like we should just go right into it and start with our title topic just to make sure we make the most sure. of the, the yeah. time we have. So I've got a little side horror talk about some other titles. Ooh. Like, well, you, you you didn't see Arcadian, did you? No, that's the only okay. one I didn't see. I wanted to mention mentioned. it one more time, so we'll get to that later. Okay. Also, I watched a spider horror movie. Oh, did you watch Infested? No, Sting. There's two this month. Oh, I saw a headline two about this month. Sting. I'm curious. I don't to, like Spidey. And for my birthday, the universe was like, here's two Spidey horror movies. Okay. And I'm like, fuck you. I gotta, You're dumb. I gotta watch Infested. <laughs> yeah, Infested's on the list. But anyway, so yeah, we'll start with Civil War. Okay. We'll talk about that later. So I don't I already posted a non-spoiler Civil War review to the to the YouTube channel. So I feel like everybody out there knows that I love, love, love the movie. Yeah. How do you feel about yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, I think I talked about it briefly when we were doing our South by wrap-ups. If I didn't you're hearing it for the first time, I guess now, but like also adored. We're not going to have any debate here. I think this, mm. this is Garland's best movie. It was my favorite movie at a South by and like the readings on it are understandable across the board because it, it's an intentionally ambiguous and it makes you think about it instead of giving you the answers. And that is the point of it. But like, um ht over at inverse uh, today posted an interview with garland nick offerman uh and other people from the cast i forget who else but like it was an all-encompassing review and like the, the headline is i think people are reading this as being like apolitical like garland isn't taking a stance on anything but like the first quote in it from garland is like this isn't an apolitical movie yeah. this absolutely has a message and i think you might not you might not be reading it correctly if that is your takeaway. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, it, it, this is begin. Civil War is the movie of discourse that it's going to be the discourse for the next week at least. Um, I am erring on the side of I'm sure the same as you, but like, I feel like this is a movie about journalism, America's refuge, like, kind of like dodgy relationship with journalism. And on top of that, like, the Civil War doesn't matter. It's the background, the, the background of what is happening and like we don't need the exposition we don't need to know how we got there fucking life is happening yeah so like I, it's the point of the movie isn't to be to show the civil war it's to show where we are in this point in time and also again like it's a movie about journalism or than anything i agree with most of what you said again like we're not going to have a debate between the two of us yeah. the the title of the video was more so inspired by you know yeah. some stuff that we've we've read in terms of differing opinions on the film I, I'll agree with you. I, I also don't find it to be apolitical. And I, I've seen a lot of a, a lot of folks out there. And you know, like with all due respect, you can have any yeah. opinion on a movie. I'm not I'm not attacking anyone. I'm just hopefully stating my stance in a way it's that our reads and explains, feelings. Like, that's the thing. explains why I don't think the movie has these qualities. But I, I've seen a lot of uh, folks call it, you know, soulless and thin. I find it can be really challenging for some to figure out when something truly is soulless and thin versus inspiring you to engage by not even necessarily leaving things up to interpretation, but challenging you to process something in a way that isn't like spoon feeding you information and the right way to think as that movie's presenting it. Yeah. If that makes much sense. Um, I feel like there was something else you just said that I wanted to, which part? that I wanted to respond to also. That was the apolitical thing. And then you said something else. After. I said a few things. Yeah. Which, which parts of it? 
My brain, my brain. Make You're it okay. Work. Matt, make it work. That the, make that it the work. Civil War is, I, that oh, I said, it's the that, background. Yeah. So I don't think it's that the Civil War doesn't matter. This, like yes. The Civil War the Civil itself War matters, very much like, matters in yeah, this yeah. movie. I think, I think the reason why you might feel the need to say something like that is because of the marketing. And, yes, and I, I've said this yep. before. I do, I do think that the marketing campaign for the movie isn't necessarily accurately selling what it is. Like there was such a heavy emphasis on, yeah. on the country map and it almost gave it almost gave at least me the impression that they were almost setting up a like a purge like scenario where you had to figure yeah, out the specifics yeah, yeah. of the country mm -hmm. and why things were that that was like a non issue it did yeah. it didn't matter ultimately which states aligned and why or anything like that all that mattered was that we have hit the point where we're in a second civil war. And then by using war photographers to explore the situation, highlighting how people's choices can pave the way to darker paths and what our actions can do to change the course of the future. In particular, heavily focusing on how photojournalists can do that. But I also think there's a broader layer to that as well. Yeah, I think there's equal, maybe not even equal, but I think there's enough of cynicism and hope kind of smashed into one um in the way that you know again like garland isn't taking sides and that might be frustrating for some people because once again like he does try not to take sides while he does have a message through it all mm -hmm. um and again like that the horror of it is to to look at what is happening and try to address it how you might and like try to take in how we got here i think that's where like the scariest material comes from because while he doesn't actually tell us why the civil war happened mm -hmm. and once again it doesn't matter not that that's not yeah. the point of the movie um and that like so actually part of uh ht's article actually says there was a whole big text exposition and that would have hit in the front of the movie um but he decided to delete it so we actually would have had an entire explainer of why the civil war happened and how we got to this point but garland had, oh. garland had that same realization where he's like None of that matters. What matters is what we're seeing right now. And so, uh, so I wrote the re review for Collider out of South by, and they were nice enough to like come back and be like, it's coming out in release. Do you want to add anything to it to like rebump it? So like, I got to write another paragraph and the paragraph I added to my review after thinking about it f f many days later, which was very nice. I could actually digest it more was analyzing the uh, relationship between uh, Dunst and Kaylee Spanny's characters because I sitting on that sitting on that relationship of a young photojournalist and a veteran photojournalist in those positions and how that evolves over Civil War. I think like we might be talking about possible awards considerations towards the end of the year for Dunst. I, I think at, at, the, at the very least, like I don't think Spanny will get anything, but like for my money, for what I've seen right now and what the usual awards landscape is, I would. I, I'm going to have a hard time keeping Kirsten out of conversations for nominations for me. I fucking loved it. I literally, look, it's on Do Not Disturb. I swear. No, you see the little moon? I see. You're fine. It's okay. Um, also, I'm just really happy about that text message. So I'm kind of glad it dinged. Um, Jesus. You're fine. But like, why, why is it still making the noise if it's on Do Not Disturb? Is my so here, question. here's the thing. I, I do want to respond to this comment a little bit. Um, and yeah, like no ill intent either. I think this is an interesting con co concept because yes, like we are journalists responding to a film about journalism and maybe that is why I appreciate it more because we do live in a time where journalists are like the whole Trump administration made journalists the enemy and put people's lives at risk. And depending how the forthcoming election comes, that will continue if we are put in another position of this nature. Um, so I think it is important to show what journalism actually is versus, I can't believe I'm fucking saying this, but like the actual fake news out there. Um, so maybe I did think that was a little, that mattered more to me than the general public. Like I will admit that like the journalism aspects matter more to me because I am seeing on screen people who are obviously doing way more than entertainment journalists uh, because we are not war journalists. We are fucking reviewing movies and talking about them. We are not putting ourselves at danger. Um, but other people would like to see us put at danger. And I, again, I wrote a 
like a few lines in my review because number one, Gamergate 2 is trying to happen right now. Number two, I know many women journalists and journalists of color and stuff of that nature who are actually threatened on a daily basis. Like I am a white male journalist. I don't have to worry about the things other people do in my industry, an industry with no danger associated to it. But there are people out there who will do the nastiest, most mean shit. Um, and yes, to see Civil War address some of that, but again, through much dire circumstances and on a level that is journalism that uh, actual heroes do. Yeah. Yes, that does matter to me. You are correct. Like, yeah, I, I can't fight that. I'm, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with this statement as well. And I, I think that's, I think that's appropriate to any movie where, you know, movies on the one hand are opportunities to walk in someone else's shoes, but no, no matter whether it's your profession or literally any quality about you, something can strike an especially strong chord if you, if you see yourself or something you do or something about you in something playing out on screen. So the journalism aspect was pretty fascinating to me. And, and in particular, the Kirsten Dunst, Kaylee Spaney, um, uh, aspect of, of the story, just in case you haven't seen the movie yet. I know a lot of people in the chat have, um, Kirsten Dunst plays a very experienced war photographer. Kaylee Spaney is an up and comer. And when they cross paths, Kaylee Spaney kind of wants to follow in her footsteps. And, you know, it's about her coming to the realization of what that means and her figuring out what she wants her path in her career and in this world to be. And, oh man, the two of them paired together, just so good. Like, they're, they're so good together, but I think the way that the story handles their arc just like so well reflects the the cyclical nature of of what we of what we do to ourselves as as people in general. The movie the movie heavily focuses on the value of photojournalists, especially war photojournalists, and the importance of showing the atrocities that take place in this world in an effort to stop them, while but. also highlighting how disturbing it is that those photographs, that evidence of terrible things often goes unacknowledged, and then it happens again. Yeah. And what that can do to someone in that line of work but that line of work is still so necessary. That doesn't mean we can just give up on it. Th those thoughts and ideas have burrowed their way into my brain in such a disturbing but well-earned fashion. And that's a big part of the reason why I think this movie is exceptional. Yeah, and I think I think part of the other conversation that people are having is that that's nothing new. And while I kind of agree, like, that is nothing new, it, to, to see it again, though, means something. And to see it put in the terms of a second civil war once again, which is mm -hmm. toying with our own reality. It's and, like, I, I will happily point this comment out. Like, I, I am a liberal. That's fine. I You don't – I'm going to say it out loud. I'm not hiding anything. Like, you must you must be new here, basically, is, is the comment <laughs> I will say. Uh, fuck Trump. That's very easy for me to say. I don't care. Um, but, yeah. So, like – with the way they're showing it and the way they are doing it again, like I understand this is quote unquote, nothing new, but depicted this way shown in this universe and, and using the tools it has, like it, it's, I do think it's kind of important to say it. No, I, I think it answers comment. Um, nothing, nothing new, but sometimes I think when that nothing new is repackaged in a movie, sometimes it can be difficult for some to process. So yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, there's, there's many movies. I think I'll actually probably bring up this point when we talk about something else later mm -hmm. too, but I think it's important to see familiar ideas in the real world repackaged in films. If it inspires someone to process them in a different way. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like being subtle doesn't work. Like how many, we've been plenty subtle over decades and generations and we're still in the same spot mm -hmm. historically. So like, maybe we do have to just hit people over the head with the fucking messages. I, I, I get that. But also at the end of the day, like I understand how Garland's approach. The movie doesn't do that though. Well, like, I, I, like this it, is, I just was going to say. I yeah. think it's like, I think it's one of the movie's greatest strengths is that it inspires you to think, but without being heavy handed, it inspires you to be active about it which I think is a real feat in filmmaking and storytelling in general. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also think it's just fucking beautiful. I, I oh my do God, think it's this so movie well is shot. gorgeous. Uh, and I think 
again, like Garland's, whether I agree with his takes or not, whether I think his movies deliver or not, like I hated men. I'm not going to lie about that. Like I thought men was a real down note. Uh, so it's crazy to me to go from like Alex Garland's worst movie to again, me thinking this is his best movie. I think um, it's his best movie. So like that, that is where I stick. And I, it's just those scenes I was describing where like the visual composition is everything. And like you have the, the score doing that old twangy kind of like folk music from old America, quote unquote, old America in the movies terms. Um, and then pairing that with like the visuals of a forest just on fire because of the war. But like the photojournalists are kind of just like soaking it all in and it's just part of their life. And it's something they have to like, it's, it's gorgeous. I, it's crazy yeah. how good that looks and performances are a plus. So like, it just comes oh. together in ways that are just Go to the Jesse Plemons yeah, stuff. Like, of course, like Plemons, Plemons has a Plemons, small, small role. Stephen McKinley Henderson. Um, and then obviously we've said Kirsten Dunst, Kaylee Spaney, mm -hmm. Wagner Mora. I mean, really just truly exceptional work yeah. across the board. Yeah. This, this is a movie that I'm keeping my fingers mighty tight for in yeah. terms of it going the distance and entering the award season <sighs> conversation. I, I think it misses. I don't I'm like I'm a little a little worried about it. I haven't looked at any box office projections or anything like that, but I don't Even, know, maybe the conversation think, will get it. You know, no, you know I think what? the conversation will kill it. I actually think the con there's going to be so many people that don't want to yeah. touch this movie. It might. Um, I think the conversation I, kills it. I, I'm not going to rule that out yeah. as a possibility, but what I was about to say is my parents watch a lot of movies. They watch Fair. a lot of movies at home. They made a point to buy tickets and go see Civil War. So That's fair. my hope is that if they felt inspired to do that, maybe it will do fairly well at the box office. I don't I don't I, know. But I, I just I want to see this get the the response it needs to go all the way. I I just fear that because of the ambiguity of it, again, big old air quotes, you know, that's just what people are saying. But like the approach it takes, the way it deals with things, it leaves some people wide open to have any interpretation. Um, so, I mean, yeah, truly, like I'm not gonna, the sound design in this movie yeah. is also exceptional. But yeah, I think the discourse, I think everything is going to make people sick of talking about it. And I don't think people are going to want to have those conversations again. So I think Civil War is a movie of now that happens. Mm -hmm. And let's also just, I don't know, the way the world goes. Like, maybe we're not going to want to talk about this movie in a, in a few months. This is a good point. Um, we'll see what the audience score is, because I bet a lot of people are not going that. to expect what yeah. they're going to get. In this particular case, though, I think it's going to be better than what they expect. I really do. I think I think a lot of people, because of the way it was marketed, are ready to go in and be mad at the specifics of the politics of the movie. And when that's not there, and you have none of that to engage with, and you're just basically in for like a highly engaging thriller yeah. that's beautifully shot, exceptionally well acted. I, I feel like it's going to be one of those things that exceeds those original expectations. I also feel the other side of that though, where the movie, you mentioned the purge before, but like yeah. selling the more horror elements, but also not even horror, the action elements. Whereas the purge had the opposite actually. Well, yeah, it's, it, it's right. marketing made it's people marketing mad made people when mad. they saw the movie. But so I think that the civil war, reaction maybe to people who look at the trailer and go oh my god this is gonna be a civil war mm -hmm. 2.0 like action film or something like that and when they don't get anything even near that i think that might ding the score in their opinion so like i think we, we might get both i think what you said like i think we might get your version but also my version yeah mom and m's in the house i'll use this as an opportunity to wish my mom and dad an early happy anniversary it's tomorrow happy anniversary yeah enjoy, I, enjoy your movie <laughs> happy anniversary enjoy civil war <laughs> like that literally is, that is what it is <laughs> but Bye. yeah like, i mean someone again like people might Go expect uh more world world building like i do think that's gonna piss people off i think the idea mm -hmm. that they're dropped into a the end of the second civil war is going to ruin some people's time i, I do think that's going to be a huge pain point for some people so again that goes back to what they're sold versus what they think um I was Hold on. pleasantly just, surprised by that. Yeah, we're not going to get into like. Yeah, I mean, we're we're, not, we're gonna keep it <laughs> keep it easy breezy. Don't worry. We're we're winding down at this point. Yeah. So, but if you want to go back and watch, you're safe here. And and yeah. the same is true for anything else we review on today's episode. Everything will be entirely spoiler free. Yeah. Um. Anything else you want to 
add to Civil War before, it's just, or the debate or anything before I, we move the, on? The, the debate is so strange because, again, like I don't begrudge anyone's takes on it, obviously. It, it's it's what it is. Um, I don't know. It's just like Monagle said it. I, I'm going to look up what he said very quickly because he kind of encapsulated a lot of the things I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Um but Matt Monagle also loves this movie. He's quoted in the tra he's like what the trailer quote that says like the event of the, the movie event of the summer. Um, genuinely disappointed at some of the reactions I'm seeing to Civil War, not because I think they're right, I think I'm right and they're wrong, but because I felt just a strong connection to the film's word of America. Sorry, to the film's addressing of America, and I wanted others to have the same experience I had in the theater. So like. Like, that's the thing. I had such a strong reaction to this movie in theater. Monagle did, too. Like, we all were like, holy shit, that was, like, a huge moment experience mm -hmm. to have. And to see other people coming out of it being like, that was the worst thing I've ever seen. Holy shit. Like, this movie doesn't pull... Like, the movie pulls all its punches and it doesn't do anything it says it is. Like, it's one of those divisive, did I watch the same movie things? And... and that is civil war. Yeah. Like that's the thing. That's that's what this movie's gonna be. So it's not yeah. I don't think there's ever gonna be a down the middle take on this movie. I think you're either gonna fucking love it or just walk out angry. And both are valid. It's just I wish people were here with me on this side. Yeah, I mean, with any movie out there, yeah. if you like something that much, like I've been in this position more times than I can count. It like it does hurt a little. Like you don't want to take it too personally ever, but it does hurt a little bit when someone doesn't so like it as much. Mother levels. Like I like I'm not I even counting that, that out. I, that is extreme, but like I wouldn't you know. go that extreme because I also do do think like if you don't want to engage in civil war and literally sit back, relax, and watch it as a popcorn thriller, I still think yeah. it is effective in that respect. I wouldn't recommend doing that because you'd be missing so much like meat to that movie. But yeah. I I do think that entertainment wise, Civil War has loads more to offer than Mother did. <laughs> I do agree with that. Yes. I And I actually kind of like, I was the weirdo that was middle of the road on mother where I was like, mm. yeah, this is fine. It's like, how are you fine on mother? I don't know. I was. Um, I also, mean, we have to, we don't have to do this today because we yeah. don't have time for it, but we have to have. The, oh, we do have to have. We have to have the first Omen Immaculate conversation someday because we, I enjoyed yeah, the first Omen. We're, uh, we're on opposite sides yeah. of the divide. Um, I think, yeah. I, I think, I think that is not to fight you, but no, also no, no, I think I it's, I think I it's interesting and that like, we had. The complete opposite. I, I appreciate certain things yeah. that that were attempted in the first omen. I, I think I think the extreme divide that we're experiencing might be a product of my screening environment. Actually, yeah. I mean not entirely. There's certain things like there's certain things that I found done in a way that like spoiled certain moment well we we need like a proper Sorry, we're talking about the first omen that. and immaculate yeah for anyone who doesn't know i like the first omen didn't really like immaculate perry's the reverse yes i think it's an interesting conversation of two non-horror movies releasing yeah. within a week of each or two weeks of each other and like having really like having similar, similar like yeah aggressively similar it, it, plot it's lines. so interesting to yeah. me that like I, like one spoke to me and one yeah spoke and one to you. And, yeah <laughs> I, and i think maybe that's taste maybe that i don't know i don't know what it is so we, i think um, that will be a fun i think maybe, that should be a whole episode yeah, of just like digging just into it next week we'll get to that okay. next week okay um highlighting this because we should talk about fallout we should do you want to do it now Guy. Oh, oh, this is just nice. That's I know. Nice this, is, this is nice. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so nice comment. Thank you. Especially me. Hi. <laughs> um, How much have you watched? I've only seen two episodes. So oh, I got, oh, no, I told you. I, I told well, I you I, I saw two yeah, episodes. No. I literally said We're it. We're not spoiling it. So yeah. I guess that, you know. Yeah, no spoilers. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I am someone who did not play the games. I am someone who is coming to this as a newbie. And... The pilot is really good. I love the way that Fallout sets up the vaults and sets up everything for a new person like myself. Like, I had no introduction to it outside general knowledge of Fallout because I have friends that played through it, like, very religiously. Yeah. And so, like, I know what Fallout it made is. made me want to play it. I, yeah, I know the general story. Um, I just didn't have the in-depth knowledge. So everything they do in that first episode does really well to set up the, the Brotherhood of Steel, the vault dwellers. Like, I got such a sense of who the vault people are, who the people above ground are, and mm -hmm. what the universe is going to look like. Uh, and then you get to episode two, and, like, you get the inclusions of some, like, stable characters. Like, I mean, dog meat's in it. Like, that's not a spoiler. I'm just, like, love me some dog meat. And, like, the way they treat, 
legacy characters and give them a little bit of love but also again they assert that like this is their own show like this is not going on any mm -hmm. steady timeline of the games again i wouldn't know but a lot of my friends do and they like some fans are mad that they're not doing a steady timeline of the games uh apparently oh. i have a lot of friends at ign who are dealing with some comments right now okay uh, but matt monagle who is my co-host, uh, podcast co-host, did the digital cover for IGN, and he's been writing like crazy for them about Fallout because he is a Fallout nerd. And he literally was like, it's the best possible. He'd said it's the best possible Hollywood adaptation of a Fallout mm. game. So like, I'm going with his like knowledge that. on that. And what I have seen has been very fun. I I, I like this so far. It's, yeah. it's quirky. It's post-apocalyptic. It is dire, but also like you're able to have fun with it. And that's what I get. Uh, that's what he says the games are. Like mm. The games get weird. Yeah. And I like that. So. I got very into this show very quickly. I actually think the the first episode might be one of the best uh, episodes of television yeah, I've yeah. seen in like years and years and years. That first mm -hmm. episode is top tier. I really liked episodes two, three, and four. Five was a little bit of a speed bump for me, but I'm okay. also interested in going back and re-watching it because I think that's when certain like ideas get maybe a little complex okay. and cool. and... Not really less clear because I very much understood it, but I, I don't know if it packed the same punch as the first four episodes. But also, when I say it didn't pack the same punch, it's like going from like here to like here. You know, it's not like it yeah. dropped it dropped yeah, off yeah. a cliff or anything. I loved the show. Um, I'm five episodes in. I think it adapts the world of the games to a T. Love Walton Goggins okay, in it, and yeah. it's dope seeing uh, the Brotherhood of Steel in live action. You know what I'm getting shit for in the comments? Um, I haven't played the games either, but I've done enough research to, to know the lingo, except when I did my interviews for Rotten Tomatoes, okay. I called, um, I called yeah. the knights what yeah. they wear. Mm -hmm. I called it the power suit and not power armor. And everyone's like, how dare you? Ha, ha. How like, dare you, you? Dummy, you don't know the game. Yeah, I don't. I just said, like, I know me that. I said like, that. Me mean, meanwhile... I knew the official term was power. I don't know why in the moment I said power suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because who cares on that? Like I don't literally, know. like it's suit armor. They it's care. fine. Uh, they I care. I did want to highlight Walton. Like yeah. from what I've seen alone, because I've only seen two episodes. He's good. So I've gotten one episode where he is his human character, and one episode where he is the ghoul. And fuck, I can't wait to watch more of this. And it's and it's a large part because of Walton. Like holy shit! Like yeah. that dude is just talented, and he's. <laughs> Eating it as an undead fucking bounty hunter oh. and doing it so well. The second episode to me is just a big old shootout in Fallout terms. So like, oh, I like that. Oh, episode. It, it's okay, corral shit, but it, in Fallout, you dressing Shoot, shootout. So, it's got yeah. some really meaty conversations. Well, it does just, too. Yeah, I take it back. I'll tease. Um, I'm launching my ladies' night with Ella Purnell tomorrow morning on the Collider Extras channel. If you want to watch that, one particular scene we we spoke about quite heavily was between Ella Purnell's Lucy and Dale Dickey's Ma, Ma June in oh, the yeah. store, yeah, yeah. and it's. It is such a rich character beat where, to me, it felt like one of the very first wallops for Lucy in terms of starting to process that how she perceives the vault and its agenda is not the reality and how privileged she was to be in the vault yeah. versus the version of America that has been rebuilt on the surface. <laughs> yeah. Um, are two, yes, they are. They, those are practical suits, not the visor, obviously. Like, like the, there, the, there's the some visual effects enhancements, yeah. of course, but with like, anything. But it's largely suit, and also not even that. I think one of the little tidbits that Monagle told me and like dug up, or it might have been Amelia, I forget who, from one of the IGN's coverage, is that uh, I blank on the actor's name, but he's one of the bro Brotherhood of Steel guys. Probably Aaron Moon. Probably yeah, it's probably Maximus. Aaron yeah, yeah. That like even when he wasn't in scene and it was a stunt double, he would pretend to walk in the suit because you had to have a certain like strut because yeah. you're in a mech suit, you're in a steel armored suit, so like you have to have that certain way to like carry yourself. Mm. So that's it, not only is it practical, but like the actors themselves made those suits come to life even beyond that. Like there was a, I know there was a heavy emphasis on on practical on the the show, and I think it it pays off big time. Obviously, I don't want to put down yeah. visual effects because there's, you know, visual effects enhancements here. And I think that definitely needs to be applauded as well. But there, but like everything in this show 
feels feels whole. It yeah. feels like it has purpose and it does feel it feels real. It's got that reach out and touch it vibe. And I think that heavily contributes to one of my favorite qualities of the yeah. show. And I think this takes form in a number of different ways, but it's a show that challenges you challenges you to wonder like what might you do in that situation? Like which faction in a sense would you want to to be in? Where would you want to live? What would you do if you were a vault dweller and discovered these things? So I feel like that is heavily tied to the impeccable world building in the show and how rich and real everything feels. Yeah. And, and especially like to that, I do want to bring up just like prime video themselves mm -hmm. like i think we need to start talking about them being one of the kings of adaptations right now between yeah. the boys um lord of the rings like the, again going practical what you just said and doing so much practicality like it makes a difference when you watch these shows and you watch them go full force into it and give so much money to it and like mm -hmm. the world comes to life um i i really think like Prime Video is doing a great job. Right Money now well spent. Three, yeah, with those three shows. And so like, it's so satisfying when something gets a bigger budget and you see every penny on the screen. And yeah. I think Fallout is a prime, yeah, 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 yeah. no pun intended, is a prime example of that actually happening. Nailed it. Um, just just to, to tease one other arc that surprised me in terms of how much I wound up loving it. I loved Moises Arias' uh, performance as, as Norm. He he had this quality from episode one. There was something about him that like caught my eye and drew yeah. me in. And I really liked how they expanded that throughout the season. Because he does really well playing Meek. He does really because I've only seen Meanwhile, one and two. So he like he is such a force. Like, have yeah. you seen some of his other work? I Divinity's on the top of my br brain right now because it's the most recent, but Kings of like, Summer, his first a, movie. Dude's a powerhouse. And here it's like he he like curls in, but yeah. still has a big presence, which we'll get like, I feel like is that hard first, to achieve. That first movie he had, Kings of Summer. Love like, Kings it, of it, Summer. It's one of my favorite movies of that year. It's so very good. And like you could tell that he had so much. It's so much bottled inside. He has so much energy and everything. So yeah. like good work from him never surprises me. But I yeah. think because all the marketing is so heavy on the Everyone three else. of them being yeah, on yeah. the poster together that I didn't I wasn't prepared for him to have as impactful of a role. And like, man, he it is primarily focused on the three of them, though. So it, it does also go to show that he is an actor who can make the most of a little less screen time. Yeah, I thought he was great. We let's, should wind down. soon. Yeah, let's do that second question. The second one first. Okay. Well, did we? Oh, no, do the first one first. Sorry. I didn't oh, know we didn't well, do I that. I mean, I already pulled it up. Um, Living Dead Jake says, just watched the 5 p.m. IMAX showing and pretty intense. And the main forecast was incredible. Controversial. Oh, God. This is why you said that that way. Controversial question. Do you think another civil war is possible? I'm just going to say no, because I, I need to manifest it to be no. Yeah, I would like not to live through another civil war. That that'd be wonderful. That said, January sixth happened, so voting is very important this year. Is the way I'll say it. Yeah, and we, there is a better option. We need to make sure the answer to this question is no. Not voting is not the option. There we can. There is a debate there. I understand that, but there are two options put in front of us, and one is in just. So much worse than the other mm. one. There, there is one option is not great. I am not saying I love Biden, but I am saying that Trump is incredibly worse. So, anyway, that's my spiel. Let's make sure the answer to the question is a no. Mirror Domain says, "For everything I liked about Civil War, it made me want to take pictures. It took a step back with foolish behavior in war zones from that's Kaylee fair. Spaney." So that's oh. the point of her character. Yeah, though. that's my my argument. There is she is absolutely a rookie, and she is supposed to be showing. Fuck yeah, fuck you, <laughs> like we're not laughing um, at the topic. But yeah, sorry. Like Kaylee Spain's character, that is her arc. That is what she is. She is supposed to be that novice character and not know what's going on, so that Dunst's character can Lee Smith like can guide her. Like she's there to grow this little baby journalist into who she will be someday uh and we definitely again without spoilers get that in the last scene so like th that is again a, to me i do not see that as a bad thing no. that is a that is a feature of her character she's supposed to be that 
Yeah, and I I also saw someone in the comments reference the uh, again without spoiling any specific details, but referencing the scene where there's two cars side by side. And, yeah, which is crazy. It's I insane. mean, it's absolutely yeah. wild. But I I do think there is enough adrenaline in a situation like that, especially for someone newer, where you know they feel the need to 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 be reckless and show yeah. off in a sense. And sometimes you got to learn the hard way that that is not how one should behave. And that is the, the relationship that she and Kirsten Dunst have in the movie. And that, again, it speaks to the larger themes of folks who have had experience and know what is good and what is bad, trying to pass it on to a younger generation yeah, in the best, most effective way. And seeing how they rebel against or accept that information yeah. is, it, it's a very fascinating layer to this movie. Yeah, in intentional. I, I understand, but intentional. Yeah. Um, I guess with that, we should go. I'm just yep. realizing what time we gotta it do, is. We got to do our shit. All right. Promote something before we go. Uh, Your birthday. I, I turn a year older on Monday. <laughs> that is that is what I'm promoting. Happy birthday. Uh, you can follow me at Donata Bomb, Letterboxd, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok. Do that because I'm probably going to do something soon on that. I just keep getting followers. So like now hey. I have people, so I might as well start doing something. Yes, please. Um, I've been pushing for that. <laughs> for the future, you can look forward to more reviews. Uh, I have some cool things coming up, video projects, Blu-ray projects, things of that nature. So just look out for me. Um. Yeah, do that. Happy birthday. More happy birthdays. Also, I, wait, hold on. I have a pod. I need to, I need to be better about this. I have a podcast that I co-host my buddy. Brought, yeah, you have I, I'm so, I'm forever. so bad at it. It's called Certified Forgotten. Uh, we, we invite guests on. They bring horror movies with 10 or less Rotten Tomatoes reviews, and we give them their time of day that critics never did. Great. So we just posted a new episode today with the co-writer of The Sacrifice Game, Mr. Sean Redlitz. He fucking rules. And we had a great conversation about streaming and horror and what that looks like in today's landscape and also a really cool movie about doppelgangers hypnosis and vinyl records Interesting. so sort of i've forgotten find us rate us tell us we're cool because we are it's a I, I really do believe this it's a brilliant concept are, and you yeah. two make the most of it so i highly recommend checking that out and i will also of course promote collider ladies night uh tomorrow morning on the collider extras youtube channel you can catch my conversation with ella purnell which of course focuses on fallout but you can bet i had a lot of yellow jackets theories question theory questions for Shut. her that goes live at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. I know time zones now. I'm back, I'm back to knowing these time zones. Please check that out. And when you do, give it a like, drop in a comment. That always helps, and it's much appreciated. So get on that, and we'll be back next weekend, maybe with the conversation about Immaculate Could be an easy one. and the Could be an first easy one. omen. It's tempting. Have a good weekend, everyone.